So, in the video on hemoglobin's behavior, I told you that hemoglobin behaves in two ways, okay? Where hemoglobin readily binds with oxygen when the partial pressure of oxygen is very high. Uh, this happens usually in the lung alveoli, where you're constantly breathing in air, rich in oxygen. And in the body cells, where the partial pressure of oxygen is very low, hemoglobin readily releases the oxygen to the body cells, which makes the oxygen saturation in the red blood cells low. So that's quite straightforward. Now, the thing that we have to understand here for this video is there is a bit of an extra thing. So one question I'll ask my students is, when does hemoglobin readily release oxygen? So based on the picture, my students will say, uh, hemoglobin readily releases oxygen when the partial pressure of oxygen is low. In reality, hemoglobin releases oxygen when a few conditions are met, okay? Uh, pH of the blood, partial pressure of oxygen. Uh, and sometimes it also depends on the um, temperature, okay? It also depends on temperature as well. So there are a lot of reasons which will cause hemoglobin to readily release oxygen. But for the purpose of this lesson, we must understand that hemoglobin readily releases oxygen when the partial pressure of oxygen is low and when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide just means the concentration of carbon dioxide in the area. Okay? When those two conditions are met, hemoglobin readily releases it. Okay? So, what we have to understand is, how does the hemoglobin know when to release the oxygen? Because think about it for the moment, right? The body cell is especially like a muscle cell or a neuron. I use these two cells uh, as examples because these two cells use up oxygen quite quickly. A body cell constantly uses up oxygen. They constantly use up oxygen due to aerobic respiration, okay, which will cause them to have a low partial pressure of oxygen. That's why they'll always have a low concentration of oxygen within themselves. And because they undergo aerobic respiration, they constantly produce carbon dioxide, which is what causes them to have a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So the hemoglobin, uh, so when a red blood cell is passing through these type of cells, uh, when it's passing through this type of cells and when it's exposed to these body cells, the high partial pressure of carbon dioxide causes the oxygen to be readily released from the hemoglobin, right? And it goes to the body cells. So the body cells constantly receive oxygen, okay? So this brings a rather important concept, and the concept is known as the Bohr effect. Now, the Bohr effect is basically a concept or a process that was discovered by a scientist, Christian Bohr, and he stated that hemoglobin releases oxygen or hemoglobin releases more oxygen when exposed to an area of higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Example. Okay, let's look at an example here. I just want to give you two examples because this is where it becomes very interesting, okay? Um, let's imagine a body cell, okay? And the body cell has a low partial pressure of oxygen, but it also has a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. This is just an example of a situation, okay? Notice the parameters of the body cells. The parameters are low partial pressure of oxygen and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So when the red blood cell is passing through the body cell, will it release the oxygen? Yes, it will release the oxygen, but maybe releases only about 80% of the oxygen, okay? So I'm going to plot a graph there, percentage oxygen saturation to partial pressure of oxygen. So when the partial pressure of oxygen is low, for example, 2 kilopascals, the percentage oxygen saturation becomes 20%. Let's say... The, the body cell has a partial pressure of oxygen of 3 kilopascals and the percentage oxygen saturation becomes 40%. It releases less oxygen, so that's fine. And based on the previous video, we know that it behaves like a curve, so this is good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the condition of the body cell. 
the body cell will still have a low partial pressure of oxygen, but the difference now is it has a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So, how would the hemoglobin behave in this case? Again, if the partial pressure of oxygen in the body cell is 2 kilopascals, now, notice something very interesting. The saturation becomes 10%, which means to say it releases 90% of oxygen as opposed to 80% earlier. So when I put it on the graph, that blue color X, that I've plot the graph slightly differently when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher. Again, let's look at it. If the body cell has three kilopascals of oxygen and a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the red blood cell releases, or the hemoglobin releases 75% of the oxygen, making its percentage oxygen saturation only 25%. So of course, you might be like, okay, so what? If I were to plot a graph, okay, so you see, during the low partial pressure of oxygen, okay, and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 2 kilopascals makes it 20%, 3 kilopascals makes it 40%, okay? But in a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 2 kilopascals make it 10%, and 3 kilopascals makes it 25%. So, if I were to do this and compare the saturation and repeat this experiment over and over again, we notice something quite interesting. There is a different, the curve behaves differently when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low and the curve behaves slightly differently when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high. And what is that difference? As the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases, the oxygen dissociation curve shifts to the right. And when it shifts to the right, it makes hemoglobin more readily release oxygen at areas of low partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, So you might be thinking, is this a good or bad thing? This is a good thing because if I were to just draw out another curve over here, just a side-to-side -side comparison. Okay, Imagine now the body cell, I'm drawing two body cells, one at the top, one at the bottom. And I'm also drawing red blood cells in the capillaries. And the red blood cells have a 100% oxygen saturation. That means they're filled to the maximum capacity of oxygen. Uh, the body cell at the top, 4 kilopascals of oxygen. Body cell at the bottom, 4 kilopascals of oxygen. The only difference is the one at the top has a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The one at the bottom has a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So... When the red blood cell passes through the body cell at the top, look at the curve. 4 kilopascals will correspond to, based on the line that I'm highlighting, it will correspond to 40%. So the red blood cell will have a 40% oxygen saturation remaining in it. Okay. So how many percent of oxygen did it release into the body cell? It released 60% of oxygen, which is good because the body cell needs uh, oxygen right? Because it has a low partial pressure of oxygen. But if you compare to the one at the bottom, okay, the one at the bottom, um, the body cell has a low partial pressure of oxygen as well, which is, which is the same, 4 kilopascals. The only difference is it has a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So in this case, you cannot use the red graph, you will have to use the blue graph, where I've labeled it as high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So again, look at the graph, 4 kilopascals of oxygen. So when the red blood cell reaches the when the red blood cell reaches the uh, body cell, what will happen to its oxygen saturation? Well, as you can see, if we were to compare it to the graph, 4 kilopascals, compare it with the blue line, okay? And we will notice that the percentage oxygen saturation is only 10%. So how many percent of oxygen did it release into the body cell? It released 90% of oxygen into the body cell. So what do we see here? It released more compared to the one at the top. The one at the top only released 60% of oxygen. The one at the bottom released 90%. So that's the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect states that the curve shifts to the right, as you can see on the graph there. Okay, the red color graph is uh, the red color line is on the left. The blue color line is on the right due to the higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 
And the other thing is, it states that hemoglobin readily releases more oxygen in these conditions. Of course, then students will ask the question, why? Well, we will look at that in the next part of the video. So for our purpose of the lesson, to summarize everything, all we just have to say here is as follows. Hemoglobin behaves differently when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low and when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high, in which when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high, the curve shifts to the right. When the curve shifts to the right, we call this the Bohr effect or the Bohr shift. The Bohr shift is pretty interesting or significant because it states to us that the hemoglobin more readily release oxygen when there is a low partial pressure of oxygen and when there is a higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide. It's a bit confusing, so I hope you understand this. If you're not exactly sure of what I'm explaining here, uh, drop me a comment and ask me a question there, and I'll try to reply as soon as possible.